you've developed a comfort zone, which in, in many cases probably is a defense mechanism, so I understand that. However, that is standing in your way of your ultimate happiness. And it feels like someone may be refusing or may at least maybe having difficulty accepting the fact that they need to do or you need to do some sort of internal healing or make some sort of internal switch to change how your love life plays out. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading, yes, for your day or for whenever this reading resonates for you, yeah? Please keep in mind that time is an illusion, so this is a general reading, so whenever you're guided to watch this reading, then that's most likely the rest of the message for you in that moment, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense in that given moment. If you felt guided to, to watch the reading and it would and like for whatever reason, but yet it doesn't necessarily resonate right now, just hold on to it. It'll most likely resonate for you <clears throat> later on down the road, yes? But also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. I hope you guys are having a, uh, a good week. You're doing well. It is Thursday. We are almost at the weekend, y'all. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's see. Do I have anything to say? Um, other than you can check the playlist if you would like to dive deeper into the morning coffee rabbit hole. Also, merch is still available. Still working on the whole URL thing, but the link is in the description box. If you would like to get some, just copy and paste it. For some, some people are saying that the copy and paste option isn't working. Uh, I just have to, whatever. I also need to get, like, I want to get, I want my own morning coffee mug, y'all. So I'm going to get one of mine. I'm going to get one. So that way you'll be able to actually see it in action. Yes. Uh, thank you, Allie, for that suggestion. Even though it was, it's a suggestion. It was a good suggestion. It was something that I knew I wanted to do just because I wanted to have my own freaking mug, but like haven't gotten there yet, but we will. Okay, cool. So continuing this week, we are keeping up with the vice versa deck and then uh clarity is coming from los carabello and then of course as usual we will cross the oracle guidance bridge when we get there yeah all right y'all let's get into this see what's going on for the collective at this time here we go wait hold on wait hold on wait hold on wait okay Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, ships, relationships, romances, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. Five shuffles here. And look, we'll see what we've got going on today. One. Okay. Hold on. One. All right. Morning coffee. I'm seeing the same colors as I did a few days ago. This is two. Um, purple and yellow. Yellow, yellow representing clarity. This is three. Purple representing, whoops, purple representing higher wisdom, higher knowledge, your higher chakras. Purple, purple to me, even though, even though the third eye, in my opinion, looks kind of purpley, technically the color is indigo. Um, but really when I think about purple, okay, well actually what I'm seeing is like a lavender, which to me, translates into the, the crown chakra normally when i'm when i'm working with my chakra system and i'm visualizing it i often see my crown chakra as like a very light lavender or even white 
Um, so what I'm getting from this, look, there's that Queen of Swords again with her back turn. And it's interesting because the Queen of Swords came out with her back turn before. This is three. Um, but what I'm getting here is that there is a sense of clarity that's coming through for you or maybe for a large group of the collective. Um, and it is actually translating into a sense of inner peace, even though you might be a little bit on the cold side, you know, with your back turned. Like I said, when the Queen of Swords came out reverse, not reversed, but with her back turned previously, um, there is a sense of, you know, being cold or being standoffish or being closed off. And it feels specifically like being closed off to a group or at least a number of people around you. Or it could just be like you're really taking time to go within and be with yourself. So on the outside, on the surface, it looks or feels like or is perceived as you being cold. But I don't really feel that's the case. I don't feel like you're being cold for the sake of being cold. I feel like what's going on here is you're turning within, you're looking inward, you're not trying to focus on the external, you're really not trying to hear what other people have to say to you about anything right now. You're really focused on going within and understanding what it is that's happening for you. For some of you specifically, there is a deep sense of clarity that's coming in for you right now and that is causing you to turn away because you want to focus on it, you need to focus on it. It's an interesting, it's an interesting energy. However, I will say that it's a good thing because of the clarity I feel that's coming through for you. Okay. This is four. And this is five. So when I'm shuffling this deck, what I like to do, since it's the vice versa deck, there are two sides to the deck. What I like to do is I like to split it in half and then flip one of the sides over and then shuffle it. So that's... So that you guys, I don't know, maybe it kind of felt like maybe one of one or a few of you were questioning that, were wondering, not that you were questioning it, but that you were wondering. So there you go. Okay. All right, kids. Let's get into this. What's going on today? What do we want to talk about today? What do we need to talk about today? I feel like there's something we really need to talk about. And it may have, maybe it has to do with this clarity that's coming through for you. Interesting. Oh boy. Oh, we do have some cards in reversal. That's interesting. I was wondering if we have some cards in reverse and we do. All right. So I'm just going to roll with it this time. There are a lot of reversals here. Okay. Uh, overall energy, you have the Wheel of Fortune on one side, which is in reverse. You also have the Six of Pentacles on the other side. So this is actually, this may be corresponding to whatever we were talking about in the past, uh, recently in which the Queen of Swords came out with her back turned. Um, but it's also relating to what we talked about yesterday, because yesterday the Six of Pentacles did come out. But it was the darker side of the Six of Pentacles. And to me, that was an energy for you guys of talk, of, of, of feeling like, of going within and trying to understanding some sort of mishaps or something that was not balanced and not reciprocal. On this side of the card, it is a daylight scene. And to me, when the daylight scenes are, are showing themselves here, that is a representation of clarity, in my opinion. It's a representation of, representation of clarity and understanding coming in, into play. On the other side of the deck, we do have the Wheel of Fortune, but the Wheel of Fortune is in reverse. And again, it's another daytime scene. So what this is kind of saying to me, especially with the rest of what's going on here, um, a lot of cards have come out. Most of them have come out in reverse. Um, but I feel like there's a cycle that you're putting into an end, uh, putting to an end um, some sort of karmic hamster wheel you may be working on getting off of. But it feels pretty tumultuous right now um, because all of the other cards, except for one, all of the other cards that have come out here, they're all reversed. And it's interesting because I was talking about that purple energy, that, that lavender energy, and to me that was speaking to higher awareness. And often when that comes around, it often or correlates with the energies of the high priestess. There's the high priestess. But she's in reverse. And again, 
The rest of the cards, except for one, are all in reverse. The only card that is not in reverse is the Seven of Swords. So it's, it feels like it's the Seven of Swords energy that you're coming to terms with, or at least trying to come to terms with. And this could be why that Queen of Swords came out with her back turned. Um, and this could be why you're in a stage right now where you really just don't want to associate with people or you really just don't want to talk to other people. What I'm feeling specifically is that you are, somebody here is fed up with the lies and the trickery. I feel like part of the reason why you're not trying to get an external opinion about this is because you're tired of listening to other people make excuses for themselves. I did just hear that specifically. Maybe there's a sense of gaslighting that's going on here. Um, it could have been a situation in which you were trying to talk to someone about it. You were trying to have a conversation, get some clarity on it, and they just were not fessing up. Smoke and mirrors. They were trying to misdirect. They were trying to make excuses. And so... So it feels like you, you're, you've had enough. Now, the other thing about this is with the High Priestess in reverse, I feel like you're also trying to come to terms with why something has happened. I do feel like even though there is a sense of clarity that's working its way through for you right now, I also feel like you're having difficulty coming to terms with it. What I'm feeling with this... Que with, ooh, all right. Well, I wanted to say the Queen of Swords again. But what I'm feeling with this High Priestess is that you're really questioning the universe. You're really like, why the fuck did this happen? What the hell is going on here? Like, how did we get here? Some, something like that. But really questioning the universe. And you might be, you might be in a pretty angry place. Now, what are the other cards that have come out here? Nine of Cups, the Hierophant, the Eight of Swords, the Five of Cups, the Ten of Wands, and the King of Wands, all in reverse. And I'm just, I, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and I'm not going to try and make it into something that it's not. I'm just going to talk about what I'm feeling here. And I'm feeling like you're dealing with a King of Wands, or an individual who is extremely selfish. And this situation has been overburdening for you. And I want to say for the longest time, the Ten of Wands in reverse, Five of Cups in reverse. There, What I feel like is going on here is you've been in an extended period of emotional turmoil. And this might feel like you are stuck in a rut or that you're trapped somewhere, or at least you're trapped in this relationship with an individual that just doesn't seem to give a damn. And quite frankly, never did. But I feel like that's what you're coming to terms with. Now, continuing, you do have the Eight of Swords here to the Hierophant and to the Nine of Cups. So we have, we have the backside of the Hierophant, which technically could be a good thing. Because when you get... I know... If you've been following me for long enough, then you know that I don't necessarily appreciate... The, the energies of the Hierophant a lot of the time. Um, I tend to be a pretty strong rebel type of energy, very much a free spirit. And the confinement and the conformity that is represented by the Hierophant is not my favorite topic, is not my favorite energetic vibration. However, I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't recognize the value of some of the lessons that I've learned within dealing with Hierophant energies. And spirit is really wanting me to say this because... <laughs> of the fact that, you know, my less than appreciative mindset or view, point of view of the Hierophant. But the Hierophant, while it, he does, or this energy does represent institutions, uh, social norms, status quo, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. The Hierophant, in my opinion, also represents really strong and tough three-dimensional earthbound lessons. And so when you get to the other side of the Hierophant, to me, that's like, just like with the High Priestess here, because these two are actually, these two are counterparts, okay? 
when you get to the high priestess here, you get past the veil, you get past, you basically pass the test, you pass the lesson, and you learn the secrets, and you get, you get insight into some deeper aspect, deeper aspects of life, uh, higher awareness, and all that stuff. I feel like it's very, it's a very similar energy with the hierophant here. However, the hierophant came out in reverse, and it was this side of the card. So to me, what this is saying is you're having difficulty getting through the threshold or getting over the threshold or getting past the gate or getting through this lesson. You're working on getting past this and understanding the deeper elements of what it is you've experienced here. And yet there's an energy here of questioning the universe and it kind of feels like why the hell or why the fuck did I have to go through this? Your ego might be getting in the way. And as I say that, depending on your situation, obviously we could be talking about a romantic situation for some of you. But for others of you, your ego getting in the way may be represented by this King of Wands also. Energy. Because the King of Wands and the King of Wands are very confident in themselves. And often that translates into a sense of egotism. There seems to be, there seems to be a comfort zone that's standing in your way. Nine of Cups. And that's keeping you trapped. Eight of Swords. So whether this is a situation in which you're dealing with someone that's extremely selfish, egotistical and whatnot, or this is an element within you, ultimately what it feels like here and, 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 and okay, so I, I, this is actually really translating into some sort of romantic situation. For some of you, it could be one person that you've been dealing with for a certain amount of time. It could be a type of person or a type of energy that you've been dealing with for, for a certain amount of time. Um, it could just be a circumstance or a circumstance within romance or just a way of approaching love and approaching romance that is detrimental to you. Um, you've developed a comfort zone, which in, in many cases probably is a defense mechanism, so I understand that. However, that is standing in your, what I just heard is that is standing in your way of your ultimate happiness. And, the, and it feels like here, and this actually really could be where the ego is getting involved. King of Wands in reverse. It feels like someone may be refusing or may at least maybe having difficulty accepting the fact that they need to do or you need to do some sort of internal healing or make some sort of internal switch to change how your love life plays out. All right. And this could be where the Seven of Swords energy also is coming in to play because you could be deceiving yourself. You could be robbing yourself of potential partners or potential situations that would be much better for you. The, mm, all right, listen here. This is a pretty unpopular opinion, especially in the Tarot world, okay? And I don't say this to bash anybody. Um, I don't say this to bash anybody. This is between me and you, okay? Not, um, and, and this has nothing to do with other readers or anything like that. This is between me and you right now. I, ever since I started my channel, yes, I started doing Twin Flame readings, which translated into love situations. But I always wanted to focus my channel on working on the inner healing that is necessary for us as individuals to have a better quality of life. And a lot of what you find within the tarot community here on YouTube, or really anywhere else to be honest, but mostly here on YouTube, what you find is a bunch of, in many cases, a bunch of ego stroking when it comes to love and relationships. I am not one of those readers to sit here and dive into your love life and tell you if somebody's cheating on you or tell you if, um, you know, that person's gonna come back 
or like I, I, if you want if like say we're doing happy hour and you want a, a reading on in terms of the energies between you and someone else okay that's fine but i'm not going to sit here and spy on them or try and dig into their uh, into their mind and like um cross the line of bombarding or um invading their privacy okay but if I'm doing a reading like that for you, I'm mostly going to I'm most like I'm mostly going to look at the energies between the two of you and try and get you some clarity that you need. But also my focus here is to help you start to understand what's going on here or what's what may really be wrong so that you can take that and work on yourself. And what I'm feeling here is I'm talking to somebody who may be a serial um uh reading watcher maybe the type of person to like get a reading from one person and maybe get what they are looking for but then go to like six other readers to try and see if it's the same thing but you're getting all kinds of different results with all that right i am not someone to facilitate that i am someone to say nope we're not doing that there we're not going to focus on that person we're going to focus on you and what's going on within you that has you in a cycle like this so if you have, if you find yourself on this reading right now and it resonates for you in some way and you're new to me, hi, it's very nice to meet you, but we're going to focus on you right now because it looks like you're in a process and what I'm feeling is your higher self, the universe, your guides, your, your ancestors, your spirit guides, whatnot, whatever, the angels are pushing you to do some sort of internal work, to stop deceiving yourself and start to learn the lesson behind this situation so that you can break yourself free of this comfort zone energy and this mental prison and so that you can get out of this overly burdensome situation okay five of cups ten of wands king of wands the king of wands quite honestly could represent you here i mean yes i am feeling like it's representing another person most likely a masculine individual but ultimately you two are mirroring each other in this sense of stubbornness and maybe egotism that is causing you to not want to go within and figure out what's what you're holding on to within that's keeping you in this type of situation regardless as to whether it's with the same person or with you know, or if you find it to be with multiple different people okay this is that cycle that you are coming to terms with, the Wheel of Fortune in, the ver in reverse, that you are on the precipice, I want to say, of breaking yourself out of. But that comes from understanding how things are not reciprocal, Six of Pentacles, allowing the sun to come up on that and allowing that to be illuminated within you so that you can start to heal the discrepancies within, okay? I want to get one more pull from this deck just to get a continuation of the story to see what else what needs to come through right now and then we'll get into some clarity yeah so what else do you want to say about this spirit okay the three of pentacles totally just tried to come out but it didn't the three of the three of pentacles is about self-mastery and working on yourself okay rebuilding your foundations here looky here you guys looky here all right so there's the Six of Pentacles again, but now we have that nighttime scene where we see somebody's face. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't necessarily look like he's all that sad, but to me, and this is the same as when this Six of Pentacles came out a few days ago. I don't remember when it was, but it came out recently while well, I've been using this deck. It was most it was this week because I started using this deck this week. But in this case, it feels like someone is looking over their town or their kingdom or whatever it is they've built and are recognizing how things are not balanced and not reciprocal. And that's providing a sense of sorrow here. But the one card that has come out, there's another, there's another card on the other side of the deck. We'll talk about that in a second. But the one card that has come out here is the world. So this really is a situation in which you're in the process of overcoming something very difficult. I did just hear that, okay? It's this, bringing this ending into fruition is not going to be easy. Quite frankly, what I'm feeling is it's not necessarily meant to be easy because it, it, in, in the challenge, in the difficulty, in the effort that you're going to need to put in to end this cycle, you're ultimately going to learn a lot you're going to have learned a lot and you're going to going to go through some pretty extreme not extreme pretty strong and very beneficial expansion 
okay? But that's not meant to be easy. You gotta work for it. Point blank, period. <laughs> okay, no matter how triggering that may be, you gotta work for it, all right? You have to take the steps. You have to take the action to do so. And I am the one to put myself out there, put my neck on the chopping block and be like, no, we're not gonna talk about that person. We're gonna talk about you. Because this is not about them. This is about you. And that makes me not as popular as many people. And quite frankly, I don't give a shit. Because that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to help. <laughs> okay? Even though I have all kinds of Leo energy and that makes me naturally popular. I don't give a shit. Okay? This is about you. On the other side of the deck, you have the Wheel of Fortune again. But it is still in reverse. And this is the other side of the Wheel of Fortune in which we have the hang, not the hangman, the magician representing how you manifest what it is that you need in your life or you manifest cycles or you have the power to manifest as the wheel of fortune is turning. But here with it being in reverse, what this is saying to me is unfortunately at this point with what it is you're dealing in your life cycle, you are the one that continues to manifest this cycle over and over and over again. This has nothing to do with the other person or the other people. We can sit there and talk about how this character is a, is a MF this and a piece of shit and this, that, and the third until we are blue in the face, honey, but that ain't gonna change a damn thing because you can't change this person. And even if this energy is, is representing itself within you, the only person that's gonna be able to change that is you. Just like for the other person here, if we're dealing with another person here, the only person that's going to change that for them is them. So sitting here trying to focus on it, sitting here trying to do a reading on it, well, how do they feel? Do they really love me? Do they want to be with me? Are they going to come back? Are they lying to me? Are they cheating on me? We could do that until we are blue in the face. Not going to change a thing. Until you go with it and figure out how you are perpetuating this situation, how you are allowing yourself here we go, taking responsibility again. You gotta take responsibility for where you find yourself. Not for the actions of the other people, no. And as you go through this life, as you go through all of these experiences, you could be of the highest vibration and still get fucked over by somebody else. But that's their choice. We all have free will, okay? It's not about... I lost my train of thought. That truck is distracting me. But, I mean, I think you guys get it at this point. It's not about them. It was never about them. It's always been about you and how you can grow and how you can heal and how you can be better for it. Okay? All right, let's get into some clarification here. Five shuffles. One. Two, this is three, four, and five. I definitely want to start with the Hierophant. Because that seems to be where someone here is really getting tripped up. So let's talk about this. What is the lesson that you're needing to learn in this cycle, in this cycle right now? All right, here we go. What uh, what's going on with this higher thought energy here, please, spirit? Materialism. King of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Also, what I heard about this um, is pride goeth before the fall. You have the Six of Wands, and then right after the Six of Wands came out, you had the Tower. This feels ego-driven. I did just hear that, ego-driven. 
and it feels like somebody or whomever this is resonating for, what you're having difficulty releasing yourself from is a sense of, uh, not, uh, well, okay, a sense of egotism, but mostly a sense of materialism. Having things look good on paper. Being with the perfect individual. I am feeling for some of you, this is like, uh, in terms of, you know, having the best body or the best job or having just, just being with someone that in some way provides you with some sort of materialistic satisfaction. But that's, but that types of situ those types of situations lack substance. Like, how much love are you really experiencing in this situation? And in, for some of you, the question is, is this really love? Or is this just manipulation and codependency? But it feels like the, the, the reason you're having trouble getting past this lesson, I guess, is what we can call it, is because somebody here is trying to keep up with the Joneses. And you know what's so funny? When I went early, when I started the reading and I was saying, okay, so we're going to keep, we're keeping up with the vice versa deck. I, I wanted to say we're keeping up with the Joneses in using the, the, the vice versa deck. But I was like, you know what? I don't really like that phrase. Let's not put that out there. And then here it comes again. You're in the process of getting past the material, materialistic aspects when it comes to love. King of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the King of Pentacles, you guys, is the King of Swords to the Two of Cups. Even to the Star. And then the Magician. Woo, lordy! The Magician, the Eight of Cups, the Three of Swords, and then there's the Five of Cups again. Seeing material aspects, King of Pentacles, as they truly are, King of Swords in terms of love and relationships, Two of Cups, which ultimately is bringing you healing that's going to allow you to manifest what it is that you want, but you're going to have to walk away from that which breaks your heart and let yourself go through the mourning process, Five of Cups. Yes, this is this sucks. Yes, there's a lot that's spilling out, but ultimately whatever is spilling out is leading you towards a better relationship with yourself. There's the representation of the Two of Cups again. That's going to put you in alignment with exactly what you want and get you in that alignment so that you can move forward towards someone that potentially is emotionally available. King of Cups. But you've got to do this healing for yourself. You've got to make this change for yourself. You can't sit there and say, well, when so-and-so changes or when other people change or when society changes, then I'll change. A word? Well, let me tell you, boo, you're going to be waiting for a, a hell of a long time and you're going to be miserable the whole time. I understand that going through this right now, having to face this right now, five of cups, is making you miserable. I get it. But this level or this process of flowing through the misery is not going to be as long and drawn out if you were to stay in this situation just trying to keep up appearance, just trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is the shit that needs to fall away from your life, the tower. Okay, next then, since we're talking about getting this lesson, let's talk about the High Priestess. What does the High Priestess have to say in this situation? Okay. What does the High Priestess have to say here, please, Spirit? Yep.
What the high priestess is saying here, or at least what the high priestess in reverse represents here for you, the lack of vision in terms of the higher awareness, four of cups in reverse, underneath the deck is the seven of cups to the wheel of fortune, to the fool, there you go, to the three of pentacles, to the queen of cups, to the ace of pentacles. I mean, I didn't need to go down this far to get the message because quite frankly, I saw the message just in the seven of cups and the four of cups here, okay? Someone, in, so I guess you or whomever this reading is for, you are resisting, refusing, refusing to go within and figure out the emotional turmoil that you're dealing with or to sift through the challenges or the complexes or the trauma that you've been through in the past that has helped you to build this defense mechanism in terms of a comfort zone for yourself. But you have to recognize that that trauma, that comfort zone that you built for yourself in relation to the trauma or the, the, the shit that you've been through in the past was built out of a toxic place. Was it appropriate for you at the time? Of course it was. It was your defense mechanism. It's, helped, it's what helped you feel safe and secure. But at this point, now you're reaching a level where that comfort zone is becoming more of a detriment to you than it is a, an aid. And now it's time for you to start weeding through and figuring out, understanding your emotions doing the emotional cleansing and clearing work. The Queen of Cups is about emotional awareness. Emotional awareness that leads to greater emotional boundaries. So in order for this cycle to end, Wheel of Fortune, you're going to, ha allow, you're going to have to allow the illumination to flood your life, the sun, which ultimately is going to lead you to doing some self-mastery work, Three of Pentacles, working on yourself so that you have the ability to accept a new opportunity. And you know what's so interesting? What I just heard was so that you can provide yourself with a new opportunity. And that and providing yourself with a new opportunity looks like having a different vibrational reality that allows you to attract something better and in essence closes out that cycle, the world for good. Ah! All right, maybe not necessarily for good right away. I mean, there, <laughs> the universe does have a tendency to like, when we say, all right, universe, I'm done with something. They're like, oh, word. All right, let me serve you up a little bit of this here. Like, are you sure you're done with that? Mm -hmm. But that's your choice, right? Okay. Oracle guidance. Let's move to Oracle guidance. And that's coming from the... Actually, hold on. I heard in my head the Love Your Inner Goddess deck. There it is. Yeah, so we're going to go with the Love Your Inner Goddess Oracle deck today. Again, keep in mind, people, that we're not... Just because this is a feminine-oriented deck does not necessarily mean that we're talking to individuals that represent or resonate more or identify more with feminine energy. This is for everybody, okay? Whatever comes through with, the, with this deck, even if you are resonating more on the masculine side, it's meant to help you, okay? There's something that can help you here. Yes? Excellent. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. All right, y'all, closing Oracle Guidance. There we go. All right, what do we have? Card number 20, Daring Dreamer. Change the way you see, not the way you look. 
In a reading, this card says, you don't need to adjust your dreams to fit in with what others say is realistic, sensible, or practical. Why seek to limit the power of the universe with negative expectations? Be uncompromising with your heart wisdom. Listen, listen to what it wants and yearns for and believe that the universe has put those desires there and will show you every step to take to fulfill them. Do not allow someone else to make you feel like you should change who you are or what your heart truly yearns for. Not even a little bit, not even for one single second. The spiritual guidance of this card says, Our world needs daring dreamers to refine beauty, success, and worth. We need brave souls to shake up our cultural values so that we stop hurting ourselves and each other. You can decide what it really means to you to be beautiful, successful, and worthy. That's how you take back control, disempowering the toxic definitions created by others. Very much that Hierophant type energy, right? To live your life according to expectations set by others who do not know or care about you, who are not wise and who are, not out, and who are out for their own gain, is not a recipe for happiness or fulfillment. You are a daring dreamer and a loving, rebellious visionary. You can imagine a far kinder and more truly beautiful world. You have the awareness of the power to say no to what is unkind, untrue, and unwise. You get to invite into your life what actually has value to your soul. Be your divine badass self and as you say, hello world, you can choose what you wish, but you will not choose for me. I will choose for myself, thank you very much. Give a voice to your daring dreams. Tell the universe each day about your vision of a healed world. Speak it as though it were already real. Use your positive words of power to express your most beautiful dreams and never give up on those dreams, yourself or the world. Your vision of what is possible is the healing medicine for our future world and the way to your bliss. There's a sacred ritual involved with this card that I feel like I wanna share with you guys. So the sacred ritual says, gaze at the sky and say aloud, from my heart and my own free will, I invite the universe to bring to life these dreams of mine and state your dreams for a beautiful life and a loving world. I'll say that one more time. From my heart and my own free will, I invite the universe to bring to life these dreams of mine and then state those dreams. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>